These are the skulls of spotted hyena. Now imagine a hyena out in its natural environment and there's information coming at it from all directions. There's light and there's sound and the breeze is carrying molecules that might have information that might be sent. Now smell's a really interesting sense because it means that a bit of something, in this case probably a dead animal, actually evaporated into the air and had to be carried to the next animal, which is in this case a hyena, and then the hyena's got to do something with it. So basically, just like us, it's got a chemical laboratory built into its nose. It can sniff, can take in air, and then back here is the place where it can sense these molecules. Now, for us, scent is a secondary sense. We don't really use it that much, but it's the best source of information that hyena's got. So it's got to make the most of this resource. And so built into its nose, it's got a structure which gives it the edge, which lets it find food, when it, that food could be a long, long way away. And if you look down here, you'll see in its nose, there's all these little sort of platelets right up in its nose there. And when the hyena was alive, they were covered in sensors, in detectors for scent. And the reason this structure is interesting is it provides a really large surface area. It's the same principle as having a really big eye, if you like. The more stuff you can collect, the lower the levels of it you can sense. So in the case of the hyena, it wants a very, very large surface area because that the surface has to be where the scent sensors are and the bigger the area is, the more it can detect. So even though this part of the hyena's nose is quite small and compact, in there is a vast surface area of little bony platelets that the detectors sit on top of. And this is what helps the hyena to sense its environment. It takes the approach of throwing loads of detectors at the problem. And that means that if any little scent molecule comes past, it's got a really good chance of sensing it. The fascination in these skulls is not just that we get to look at them and admire the structures that are in them, it's that potentially we can be inspired by these structures to do things better ourselves. So for example, the hyena has this structure as a result of evolution. Successive generations survived better if they had a better nose. And that means that there's been an evolutionary push to solve an engineering problem. And the engineering problem in this case is that there are molecules in the air we want to detect. There aren't very many of them. And the animal that can detect them best is the one that's going to survive and pass on its genes to the next generation. So evolution has effectively had to solve engineering problems. And now we can look at things like this skull and use that solution to inspire our own engineering. And that's called nature-inspired or bio-inspired engineering or biomimetics. It's when engineers go out and they look at nature and they understand the way that animals do things, how it all works, and then use that knowledge to design new materials or new solutions to problems. And so it's an amazing thought that in this room here, with all of these skeletons around me, there are probably solutions to problems that engineers have now, and the animals solved those problems generations ago. But if we looked hard enough, potentially in this room, there are solutions to new future problems. And so the reason that it's worth a physicist or an engineer looking at animals is not just to admire how they work, but to find ways to use that information to make better materials to solve bigger problems in the future.